Hey there, I'm glad you found me today. My name is Angela and I'm the Inquisitive Farm Wife. What we're going to be doing today is making a homemade Velveeta without all the extra stuff. If you haven't figured it out yet, I have dairy animals, both cows and goats. And with that, you find lots of creative things to do. So homemade Velveeta it is. This month I'm participating in a collaboration that my good friend Leanne and I are hosting called June is Dairy Month 2023 where other people like us who either have dairy animals go purchase milk regularly, make, be, make cheese, show us different things that you can do with dairy. So stay tuned, lots to come. We are back at the stove and we are going to make some homemade Velveeta using cow's milk today. First thing we want to do on this project is get a gallon of milk. I'm going to leave this full cream. We're just going to pour the entire thing in. And I want to scrape as much of that cream off as possible because that flavor will be so much better with that milk having that full cream line. Next, we're going to turn on about a medium heat. And while that's warming up, we need to get the other ingredients ready. You can see here I have a bowl and a colander ready. We're going to set that aside for now. We don't need it just yet. We've got thermometers we're going to put in that milk. And now we're going to go ahead and prepare our prep bowls. I have a tablespoon of butter. I need three quarters of a teaspoon of baking soda. I need one and a half teaspoons of salt. This is where you can choose to be picky or not. Typically I would use a cheese salt, but today I'm making a fresh cheese, a soft cheese. It doesn't need anything special for a brine for drying cheese. So for me, table salt works well, but feel free to use either a pickling salt, a cheese salt, um, whatever kind of salt you like to use. Here I have a fourth of a cup of water and in it, I'm going to add a tablespoon of citric acid. Mine is well loved. I bought it on Amazon. I like to buy it in bulk because I go through uh, phases where I make lots of cheese and citric acid is something that you will find yourself using in cheese making. You can get it usually just at a grocery store. So it's readily available. And we're gonna go ahead and put that full tablespoon in this water and let it start to dissolve. Just give it a quick stir. You can see it's white in color, but by the time we are ready to use it, it will be completely clear. This is a step where it is suggested by most manufacturers to do this way. I have sprinkled it directly onto the milk and been okay. And this last bowl, I have another quarter cup of water. I'm going to add my annatto. This is a natural thing. It is only for looks. It comes from a tree, an annatto tree. And I hope I say that right. Those of you who know will probably correct me. So let me know if it, and um, a better pronunciation of it, but it is um, just to give it that bright orange color that we're used to. And it takes, I think I have, it says 20 to 50 drops for every gallon of milk. So we'll probably do at least 30 to 40. Ah, 
I think there must have been at least 45 in there. This needs to be stored in the refrigerator. When it comes to cheese making, there's all sorts of different thermometers that you can use. I like these. I get a nice long one so it'll fit in my deeper pots and it also has a clip on it. What you want to make sure is it does not touch the very bottom of the pot because you will not get an accurate measurement. This is great for a tip for you for making yogurt also. I'm going to put a second thermometer in here just to make sure that the one that I'm using is accurate. That's not necessary, but it just makes me feel a little bit better about it. And we'll just wait for this dial to get to 140 degrees. While the milk is warming up, I'm going to go ahead and add in our colorant. By diluting it with the water, it is supposed to help more evenly disperse into the milk. And it's better to do it when it's cooler. This looks like about the right color, but many times after the cheese has finished processing, the color will come out slightly darker than what you see now. Every once in a while, just give your milk a little stir very gently. You don't want to heat your milk too quickly, otherwise the end product may not be exactly what you're looking for. This is more important with a hard cheese that you plan to age. Today's recipe is very much beginner friendly. I'm trying to show you with tools that most everyone would have in their home. And looky here, we've reached 140. So now it's time to turn off the heat. I'm going to slip out the thermometer. And remember that citric acid? See how I told you it would go clear? There it is. I'm going to slowly drizzle this in and you'll be able to see the color change and the curds will start to separate from the whey. And looky there. See how you can see right there is the, here is the whey, the clear part, and this is the curds. I'm going to let this sit for just a few moments so that the milk proteins have a chance to stick together, forming a better curd for us. It's been about five minutes and our curds have had a chance to really form and get a little strength. So I'm gonna pour some of them into my colander. About half of this. Now, many times when making cheese, you can take the whey and make a whey ricotta. But because we added the citric acid, that means this is an acidic whey and it does not work well. You will not have a very high yield of ricotta if you do that. This is better used for baking, putting in soups and stews, maybe making a lemonade with it, but with the orange colorant, it might be a little bit interesting to have homemade pasta that turned a little orange. So this will be used for either a treat for my dogs or chickens, or putting on some of my acid-loving plants like azaleas or blueberries. 
An option is to have a second pot. If you don't want to have, if you don't have one available or you don't want to wash one, don't do it. But I have found for me, it is so much easier to use a second pot to put the cheese in as we work with them. You may notice that I was kind of going around and around in my colander and I did this until a mass formed and the cheese curds came together. That's when you know you have strained off enough whey. At this point it's starting to come together but it's not quite there yet. They'll kind of pick up on each other and come together in a large mass. I think we're almost there. I'll go up to the top of the screen where there's not cheese stuck and not really getting anything else to drain. So we'll add that to the pot and scrape off these bits of curds that have accumulated together on the colander. Here we are back at the stove. Turn that heat on a medium. And you can see we have one big mass. And then to this, we're going to add the butter, the salt, give that a quick stir, and this next part is so fun. Here you can see we can kind of chop our cheese. I mean, you could theoretically take out a chunk and have a chunk of cheese to eat. But now wait, this gets cool, guys, when I add the baking soda. Stir that in, and all of a sudden, it starts to kind of foam. Can you see this? Can you see what's happening? So cool. Look at the big air bubbles. See how it's gotten bigger in size. I sure hope you on the camera can see what's going on. At this point, I just want to continuously stir until it is melted. You can see it's starting to look melty, a little bit shiny. We're not there yet. It's constantly stirring. See how it's looking a little more shiny? And it all kind of reminds you of a, a melty cheese. We're getting there. Now that our cheese has turned more liquid, I think we're where we need to be. So I'm going to turn off that heat. You can use any kind of container. I like to use glass. This is just a loaf pan and I'm going to spray it with nonstick spray or you could put clear wrap on it. Now we'll just pour our cheese right in, right into the pan. Hard to do with my left hand. Keep from a film forming on top of the cheese. I do have this plastic wrap. It's not my favorite for this project, but it will work. And what you want to do is like you would do for a pudding. And you would just press along the top of your cheese and then we'll seal that down. And 
off to the refrigerator. So now that our cheese is in the refrigerator, there's just a little bit left here on my spatula. And I wanted to show you how it has set up. And it has become firm. And it really looks and feels like Velveeta. Hmm. Tastes like it too. It's a few hours later and we will check our cheese. This is our cow's milk Velveeta. I'm just going to take a butter knife and kind of slip around the edges. A gallon of milk usually makes about a pound of cheese. It could have set overnight, but I'm not so patient sometimes. Here is our block of Velveeta. And just to show you it's sliceable, I've got my cheese knife. And see? You could use this in any way you would use that box stuff. Now if you don't like the shape that this was in, all you have to do is change what pan you put it in. It's that simple. So there you have it, friends. Homemade Velveeta. And you can do it too. Your homemade Velveeta cheese can stay in the refrigerator for several days, maybe up to two weeks. But around here, it never lasts that long. Or if you're wanting to stock up while you have time, I have frozen it before too. And it works great to thaw and use for my homemade nachos where I love to just cube it, throw it in the crock pot with some Rotel, maybe some hamburger or chicken, and a splash of milk. You're good to go. I hope that you give this a try. It really is that simple and made with ingredients that anyone can get at just about any store. If you enjoyed being with me today in the kitchen, then I encourage you to go ahead and ring that notification bell so that you can see other future videos just like the one that you saw today. Thanks for watching. So glad that you decided to be here today and thank you for t coming along and joining us all on this dairy collaboration. June is Dairy Month 2023.